on today's show. Steph Curry with the shot, but we'll debate which Warriors 50 plus performance was best, Curry's or Clay's. We'll also hear from 14 year old Steph Curry on today's show. He looks exactly the same. And in the mean team, don't you dare leave Russell Westbrook hanging. It's Thursday, February 5th. The starter starts now. Good evening, sweet world, and welcome to the starters. Whether you're joining us live online, listening to the podcast, or catching us on NBA TV, we're very, very happy to have you. I'm Jay Skeets, alongside me, as always, that's Tass Mellis. Thank you for joining us. To my right, starters blog editor, Trey Kirby. Ayo! Ayo! Whoa. And finally, the international man of mystery, that's Lee Ellis. Friends. Mm, Lily. Lily, all right, fun show, as always, here for you on the starters. Trey's got a new game for us. It's going to be exciting. That I know next to nothing about. I don't even know the name of the game. It's a mystery that's, game. That's how little we know about it. Uh, we'll get to that. We also have the meme team because it's Thursday. But first, we're starting with Steph Curry, who went for a season-high 51 points in Golden State's 128-114 home victory over Dallas. Steph, like Clay, two weeks ago, really got it going in the third quarter. Scored 26 points in that period. Finished the game 16-26 from the field. He hit 10 threes. Uh, 9 of 11 at the free throw line. <laughs> Steve Kerr couldn't even believe it. Mm. Just shaking his head. And, Good uh, play call, Stevie. Yeah. This is uh, the second highest game for Steph Curry. He went for uh, 54 a couple years back at MSG. In a loss, actually, for the Warriors then. But uh, once again, the Warriors with another unbelievable individual performance. First time it was Clay, now it's Steph. I mean, you watch this game and it's like you feel bad for the other team. I don't, yeah. know how you, I don't know how you defend these guys. It was nice that he got a 50-point game at home, as you mentioned, sure. his other 50-point on the road. Uh, and, and as you mentioned, yes, uh, you can't stop them. I, I felt like Steph's was more impressive than, than Clay's. Yes, I do feel that way because Steph created more for himself than Clay had to. And, and the, the entire season, that's how it's been for me. Uh, you watch Steph, he can do it on any point of the, at any point of the floor, but he doesn't need somebody to create for him like Clay does. Well, Steve Kerr might agree with you, Tess. Uh, Kerr commenting on Curry last night after the game. Sometimes Steph plays his best when we're down big, and they were. They were down in this game, uh, and he just senses that he has to put the Superman cape on. He's so good at it. He loves the freedom of being down and saying, all right, I'm going to let it fly and bring us back, and that's what he did. Do you agree with Tess that maybe Steph's 51, and we show you, I mean, this is unbelievable teammates having 50 plus point games in the same season. We haven't had one since 94, 95 when Willie Burton <laughs> and <laughs> Dana Willie Barrows. Style. Oh, and the killer bees. Yeah. As well as the Jays there with the Mavs, Jamal Mashburn and uh, Jim Jackson did it. But uh, do, you, do you agree that maybe Steph's 51 was somehow more impressive <laughs> than Clay's 50? It's great that we're debating which 50 point game was yeah. better. But no, I think still, still Clay Thompson's because of that amazing third yeah, quarter. He hit 37 points. He didn't miss For a shot. Sure. Nine threes. But I mean, Steph Curry last night was just so amazing because he got it in the flow of the offense like Clay did. He wasn't out there just jacking up shots and just trying to get his points. He was out there. They needed him to score in the third quarter and he went out and did that. The Golden State Warriors, I mean, they've got so many different weapons. What are you going to do with Steph Curry? Lay off him and let him shoot, get up in his face and he's going to drive into the lane. It's just they've got so many offensive weapons at their disposal. I too like the Clay Thompson better just because I feel like this game was over when Steph Curry had 45 points and he was literally just gunning to get 50 for the last oh, probably he was, four that... minutes of the game. Clay got 50 through three quarters. That's that's what we're misunderestimating here. I don't know if misunderestimating is probably word, not. George but we're doing it because he had 50 through three quarters. That's more impressive but, than 51 through four quarters, especially when the last three minutes were, hey, let me try and get 50. But hold on, Curry realized his team was dead on this night. And that was also the back. case with Clay, though. No, come on. It was the third quarter against the Kings. Yeah, the Kings were up, and and it's Clay the got them in the thing. flow of an offense. Uh, but no, no one had it going on this night. But I, I just think you know to get into a quick geeky stat here: seventy percent of Clay's makes were assisted, a lot of assists. Forty-four percent of Curry's were. That's yeah, he's that's creating yeah, off the bat. Yes, right. and that's why it's way more impressive to me. Yeah, they're both amazing. I, uh, let's talk a little bit more just about what could have been with this team. Because remember in the preseason, we were talking a lot about the rumors of the Warriors trading for Kevin Love. Mm -hmm. Clay Thompson's name in the mix there, whether he was going to go, Draymond Green, you know, tons of packages being thrown around. But, like, how smart do the Warriors look now for... Right at this point, yeah. For keeping Clay. And if you read the reports, a lot of guys like Jerry West, who's a consultant for them, and Steve Kerr, they were the ones adamantly saying, 
no. Clay mm. Thompson is special, and what we have with Clay and Steph is special. As great as Kevin Love is, we should keep this and give it a go. It's a fantastic start, obviously, but it's a little unfair to say what they would have been with Kevin Love. I we, understand. We that. have no idea. It's a totally different team this year. We also, you know, give Steve Kerr a lot of praise and a lot of love, deservedly so. He would have made this team with Kevin Love or whoever Agreed. far different as well. They're passing the ball a ton this season. Last year, they were last in passes. That doesn't necessarily make you a good offense, but it's an entirely different yeah. team. So I think it's just a little bit unfair to say that. And let's say this team gets bounced in the second round. Do we look back and say, hmm, hmm. now we're going to say maybe Kevin Love would have no. worked out a little bit better. Uh, right now, obviously, there's nothing to be said. They're the second best team in the league. Yes, the Hawks are the best team. I do think that, that. Oh, wow. it's been a little record. easier. That's what the record says. It's been a little easier for Clay too, because he's on the same team he was last year. He's playing with the same players who he already knows their tendency. He's just kind of been able to just improve his game, whereas Kevin Love this season has had to figure out how to play with ball-dominant players that he's never it's had to play with before. Yeah. It's a totally different situation. I it, mean, I, after, I maybe that. after two years we can totally judge this trade if Kevin Love stays around in Cleveland. Uh, but, but I, uh, yeah, I mean, I the other great thing about the Clay non-trade for the Warriors is it lets Draymond, Draymond Green be as great as he has been so far, letting yeah. him play the four. And I think that that's something that we kind of, again, misunderestimated, <laughs> was that Draymond Green would be this good playing this many minutes as a small I, I, I get all that. And Kevin Love is a fantastic player. But I think you do have to give credit again to the Warriors, some, some of the people in the Warriors organization. Because let's point out, I'm sure some were saying, we tried right for Kevin deal. Love right oh, now. Sure. I'm saying some said, Klay Thompson, as good as he is now, he's going to be even better. They obviously saw oh, that no being doubt. around him and oh, the yeah. work the guy puts in, yeah. both defensively and offensively, that they said he's a special player. He's already an all-star. Of course. And he's that, a fourth-year player. I mean, he's going yeah. to get better. Yeah. I mean, we, well, everyone I think expected that. Credit has to be given for them to recognize And, and it is about fit. I mean, you know, with Kevin Love, you, you mentioned Trey, like he's struggling because he's in a new environment, but Clay was already in that system and in yeah. that roster. They knew exactly how to use him mm -hmm. best, and that's what they're getting now out of him. A huge reason, of course, why the Warriors are so great uh, isn't just because of Clay and, and Steph going for 50 in the games, their defense. Mm -hmm. This is one of the best defenses in the league. And there's a great article by Tom Haverstrow on ESPN pointing out just sort of what the Warriors are doing right now with their defense, but also the way they play. Mm -hmm. uh, pointing out, like, they're the best ranked defense. You know, you're, we're talking defensive rating here, of course. The number one defensive team in the league. Yep. But they also play at the fastest pace. Yeah. In the league, and Pretty they incredible. and they would become the first team, you know, to ever do that if they if they maintain Take these numbers yeah. here. Like that is unreal. The best defenses, your Bulls, your Pacers, they're usually slow down mode. Slow, yeah. slow, grind it out and win defensively. It's just unreal. And it's not just that they are such a great defensive team. They've been one of the best teams ever so far through this season. They've got the fourth best point differential in history. The other four teams you see here either won the championship or lost to the team that won the championship. Yeah. This is kind of a good omen if you're the Warriors to see your oh, name sure. up there with the 72-win Bulls, the 33 straight Lakers, that kind of stuff. They lead the league in points off turnovers and fast break points, which shows that they create so much pressure on the other team on offense that if they turn it over, the Warriors go down the other end and score straight away. And that's a good thing about defense. Everyone rotates, everyone switches. If there's a loose ball, they get it, go down and score, and you're in trouble straight away. You know the best thing that Steve Kerr did this season was make sure that David Lee was injured to start yeah. the it's because helped. It's helped. Uh, and I, I joke you were about that. Say not take the next job. <laughs> no, but at, at the same time, even David Lee, since he's got back, has gotten a lot better. He's got half the blocks that he had last year in 10% of the minutes. I mean, he has improved greatly. And there's a great article by Ethan Strauss on all of the Warriors and what they've done. It's Def been incredible. Defensively, yeah, check that out on ESPN as well. And the big part of it, you said it, Lee, all the switching that they can do, because mm -hmm. all of their guys, Green, Clay, Iguodala, they're sort of all the same height. They have the same energy on defense Absolutely. as they do on offense. A lot of teams take breaks on defense, but not the Warriors. Showdown on Friday. That's yeah. right. Well, let's go. Game of the year. Uh, let's go from the best team in the West to uh, the best team in the East. Uh, that is the Atlanta Hawks. Some news with them. This week, they, uh, the Hawks starting five. Yes, all five guys named the Kia NBA Eastern Conference Player of the Month. First time in NBA history that all f that five players have shared the award. The Hawks, as we've talked about, finished with uh, an NBA history best 17-0 record in January. Outscored opponents by an average 11.9 points. And all of their starters, Teague, Corver, Carroll, Millsap, and Horford, within that 12 to 18 points per game over that month. So, uh, yeah, a little interesting here that they... Uh, Give the nod to all five guys. You think they get five trophies? <laughs> That's a good question. Maybe they just have to take one trophy and like <laughs> split it up. Yeah, like a samurai sword through it. But we we have had guys or teammates share the honors before. 
The latest one there in 2010-11 in December, LeBron and Wade, and a couple other times it's happened as well. Yeah, and they are meeting the Golden State Warriors in Atlanta on Friday. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a fantastic game between the two number one seeds. And, and just to clarify how these nominations work, teams nominate <laughs> who they believe should be the player of the month or player of the week. So they nominated all five guys. Yeah, that's pretty respect. Cool. Yeah, pretty what cool. do, hey, what about six through nine? Why didn't they get nominated? <laughs> Next month. <laughs> Next month. Yeah, probably with the Hawks the way they're playing. All right. Got to take a break. Lots more still to come on the starters. When we return, we'll play a game called Guess That Bobblehead. Hey, that's what? right. G that B. Yeah, wait. Come on back. <laughs> Welcome back to the starters. It's time for a new game here on the show, and to tell us how it works, I now turn to our very own Bob Barker. That's right, Skeetsy. It's time to play G That B, Guess That Bobblehead. We have accumulated quite a few bobbleheads here on the set, so I will show you a picture of that bobblehead, and then you try and tell me which player it is, because a lot of times, these bobbleheads don't look like the player wow. they're supposed okay. to be. Wow, sounds easy. Yeah, it sounds it's easy not. until you see the pictures. Okay. We'll give you 10 of them. If you get eight, I would say that's a pretty good score. All First right. one. Let's do it. this. All right. One of the easier ones. Brad oh. Who is this okay. bobblehead? Got, that's right. You got the headband, you got yeah. the goatee. That's and Brad Miller. That's, that's and crazy. it sort of looks like Trey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I want to start dog. you guys off with an easy one. Pretty right. accurate. Yeah, yeah, not bad at all. Not bad, nice nice goatee. The second one, who is this guy? Who, Who is, is that guy? guy? Now that looks like is that Paul a Pierce to me a little bit. Mm. I've I've removed the distinguishing characteristics of their uniform, but uh, right. I will tell you this isn't Charlie Villanueva. Okay. <laughs> Not Charlie I don't know. Who, that, who else uh, does it look like? I thought he it looked did? like Paul Pierce. That's not Paul Pierce. <laughs> no, has he got not. an earring? Is that an earring I can see, or is it? Uh, I don't think he was no, okay. playing in an earring. He was notable for a headband, a very fast guy. His career ended pretty early. T T J Ford. T yes. J Ford. God, that looks. Yeah. <laughs> nothing like TJ yeah. Ford. That's exactly right. It looks nothing like TJ Ford. Have you Next changed one. the jersey colors, too? Yeah, yeah I has... changed our jersey uh, color. Uh, oh, I, I got this. Uh, this one's got pretty this. accurate. I think we got this recently. We did. Oh, this I looks guess. like uh, Bucks guard Brandon, Brandon Knight. Knight. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. This is a great one. This yeah. looks exactly like him, I think. <laughs> the, uh, the eyebrows. Yeah, it's all in the brows. Here's a tough one. Ooh. Lou Williams. How in the world do you know that is he Lou Williams? He looks like Will yeah. Lou Williams. Wow. wow. I'm impressed, actually. It looks like a like someone was playing Cranium and made, tried to make uh, Lou Williams. Yeah, I guess so. Or right? like he was in one of those animated Christmas specials. Yeah, it looks like a clay version of Lou Williams. Good <laughs> yeah, guess. not bad. Who that is this like guy? Who is this guy here? A f very famous oh, player. Oh, come on. Yeah, number one pick in 2007. Greg Oden. Greg Oden. Greg Oden, yeah. impressively. Yeah. Yeah. You're actually yeah. very good at guessing bobbleheads. <laughs> something I wouldn't have known about you. Uh, really skinny face there. I know yeah, that. here's a Ooh. Oh, yeah. Is that Snoop Dogg? No, that's Chris Bosh. That has to be Chris Bosh. <laughs> that is Chris Bosh. You guys are killing it. This is easy. Test that. This is easy. You'll get this one. Number seven coming up here. All right, what are we? We're like six. We're, oh, we, yeah. yeah, you're six for or five for six yeah. so far. Ah, uh, yes, I know this one because we got this Sarunas. recently. Yeah. yeah, Golden State Warriors. Sarunas Marshaluna. Yeah, he's a gorgeous yeah. looking man. You huh? look into yeah. those deep he's blue got eyes in that bobblehead. You'll just get lost for this one. I think is tough. Who Ooh. is this guy? Whoa, that's, that's a large. I will head. say very sweaty I, in his bobblehead. Mm. So it's not Patrick Ewing. It's not Patrick Ewing, though. The sweat would. Well, who are the sweatiest retired. players in NBA this history? Retired, Patrick right? Ewing. This Chauncey man is Gullis. retired. Is it? Uh, it's not Dominique, is it? It is, is Dominique, Dominique Wilkins. Wilkins. All right. Yeah, well, I, that's I a thought bad one. Yeah, it looks and a lot more like Hakeem Olajuwon. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll pass it off as that. This is the probably worst bobblehead. Uh, ever. I think this also was one that we got just recently from Jeff the Jeffrey uh, Taylor, Milwaukee Bucks. Chris Middleton. No, it's it's Jabari. That's right, Jabari yeah. Parker? Yeah, that's Jabari Parker, yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, it kind of is. The anyway. This, yeah. one, this guy, I don't think you'll get this one because who is that? Oh, that's Matt Austin, our yeah. producer. Matt Austin, full size. <laughs> <laughs> Looking good. No, uh, but uh, he shared a city once upon a time with Matt Austin. I can tell you that much. Jose Calderon? Yes. That's the hams man himself. Oh. Oh. You know when Jose Calderon dyed his hair well, blonde and I made a bobblehead out of it? No, we had a Jose Calderon bobblehead. Yeah, what? I guess we, Where did we get We'll it? keep going. You guys are killing it. Here's another one. It's uh, got to be Giannis. Giannis. Yeah. He's nice. Yeah, it's it's Giannis. Very nice. Yeah, that's a good one. That's an very scarily yeah. accurate it's one. Two out of three for the Bucks ones. I thought. You guys are doing an incredible job. Why do we have so many Bucks bobbleheads? Is what I want. <laughs> we got the hook. Oh, up. this one's ah. easy. This one's easy. He yeah. likes his pasta. He loves his pasta. It's Andrea Bargnani. Yeah. That's not a very Bargnani. good one. Wow. Bargnani, wow. Oh, that's not too bad. He's that got this little like tilt Bargnani. on the mouth. It's the same. A little tilt on the mouth. Yeah, and the a, final a, one. Ooh. 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 That's like. That's a good one. That's just a guy. That could just be any guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
Well, I got nothing. Ah, I got uh, he's very tall, very, very huh. skinny. Manu Bull. Manu Bull yeah. is right. What? That's Manu Bull? Yeah. Kinda. What do they do? I want to know, what do they do when they make these? Do they go, like, does the, does the bobblehead company go, well, do you want the, like, do you want the real good one? Or do you just want, like, <laughs> the, the budget the one? one. Yeah. yeah, if they're giving out 20,000, you know it's not going to be a very yeah. good bobblehead. If it's only 10,000, probably good. So there it is. Great game. Guess that bobblehead. bobblehead. <laughs> some easy, some most definitely not. Sorry, Sorry we couldn't get Pat Borders in there, Tassie. <laughs> Oh, no, 92 World Series MVP. <laughs> Quick break. When we return, it's the Wedgie's evil stepsister in the meme team. Come on back. Crap Order's still playing baseball, probably. Welcome back to the starters. Every Thursday, the four of us scour the internet to try and find the most weird, wacky plays from the past seven days. We call it the meme team. This week, starting five. At number five, this fan heads the ball back onto the court. You've never seen this before, ever, at an NBA game. Huh. Check that. <laughs> Bottom left it. Yes, what yeah, a great performance. It. <laughs> it's great. It just pops up. Bang. That's pretty Bud good. Wild, it too. Yeah. He didn't throw that up to himself. It just miraculously <laughs> popped up there. Great skills. <laughs> I love how he loves it so much. <laughs> at number four, after the Pelicans snapped the Hawks' win streak this week, viewers Whoa. awarded the extreme <laughs> close-up of Anthony Davis. Whoa! Whoa. It's, a brow. it's like a, like an old kung fu movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. At number three, we have a ball stall here as Reggie Jackson keeps it on the heel for a Whoa. very long. Check Jeremy Lamb in the background. Whoa! <laughs> he loved it. It did come down, precious seconds, drained from the clock. Yeah, you can't touch that here. Yeah. Nope. No, no. That is amazing. <laughs> so what is it? We're we calling it a ball stall? Calling it a ball nice. stall. All right. A ball stall. At number two, uh, late in the Heat Wolves game, Norris Cole. And the Heat forget how to inbounds the basketball. Look at this. What is he so doing? So he inbounds it to Hassan Whiteside. He so gives it back. Ball. Then he says, hey man, throw it in. Okay. No, you just stepped out of bounds. Yeah. Hassan Whiteside got the turnover in the box score for that. <laughs> At number one, Russell Westbrook takes his high fives a little too seriously. Hey, Jeremy Lamb. <laughs> Daggers. You left me hanging. Hey, hey. <laughs> Doesn't say anything. It does it with the eyes. Yes. We uh, used to debate whether Russell Westbrook was more like a dog or a cat. That screams cat to me. Oh uh, yeah. Case closed, right? <laughs> no, he's more like a cat. He's still a dog. He's a dog on, on the, the court. court. He's no. a cat off the court. Uh, oh, the debate that. continues. <laughs> One thing we didn't show you that had to make the meme team was this clip of the Curry family from 2002, where Steph explains why he chose basketball over baseball. Do you play baseball at all, knowing that your dad used to play with the with the glove and the ball? How much do you guys play baseball? Uh, we played baseball a lot mm -hmm. when we were in Charlotte. Um, played for about four or five years. Mm -hmm. And um, never got into pitching, but uh, played everything else. And uh, I liked it, but I was more interested in basketball at the time. So, Why? Um, it was more my sport, kind of. Um, I had more, um, I was kind of better at it as basketball, and I wanted to... Um, Pack some more on it and um, try to make it to the pros if I have a chance. Steph and Seth, the original Splash Bros, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Taking that or filming that down when uh, Del Curry was with the Toronto Raptors. Unfortunately, Steph didn't grow and grow up and play for the Raptors, so it was unfortunate. But <laughs> Too uh, bad. off the hardwood, a great clip there uh, of Steph who looks exactly the same he as the 14, yeah, the 14 year old. Filmed yesterday. He has not aged a bit. I love that clip. All right, let's uh, unleash the unicorn. Let's get to the starters fantasy minute. It's presented by FanDuel, the leader in one day fantasy sports. And are doing your little bite. Little bite. Fantasy lines of the night are three nominees, Russell Westbrook, Hassan Whiteside, and look, oh, Steph Curry. This is the Steph Curry show here tonight. At number three, though, in third place with the Woe Boy, it is Westbrook against the Pelicans. 45 points, 18 to 31 shooting, 7 of 9 at the line. Hit a couple threes, six boards, six assists, one steal, and one block. He was only third Woe Boy because he had six turnovers mm -hmm. as well, but there you go. And Hassan Whiteside, number two Woe Boy against Minnesota, 24 points on 12 of 13 shooting, 20 boards, three steals, two blocks, and four turnovers. This guy is unbelievable. Yeah, know, the ball. numbers he's putting up. But Steph Curry gets the little bit. 51 points, 16 of 26 shooting, nine of 11 at the line. Hey, try and be better, Steph. <laughs> 10 threes, four boards, four assists, one steal. Uh, it's it's crazy. Yeah. Good night for Wall Boys last night. Yeah, there was a whole lot. Uh, and just back to Hassan Whiteside for a second. Joining exclusive company 
when you look at those numbers of guys that have done 20 plus points and 20 plus rebounds, shooting over 90%, joining guys like Chamberlain, Matumbo, Barkley, and Dwight Howard. So let's say it right here on the show. Hassan Whiteside, future Hall of Famer. Book a ticket. <laughs> I mean, that's crazy. Look at those numbers. What I loved about Russell Westbrook, his 45-point performance, you couldn't tell that he scored 45. He walked off the floor so angry. He was angry. It was awesome. Someone didn't give him a high five. <laughs> Lots more when we come back. Pick him results and Lee's very solid play tonight. Back with the starters, a look at last night's pick and payoff results. Tess. Gained a game on me. We uh, disagreed on a lot of games. We split a couple of them, but that big one late. Tass went with the Thunder, I went to Pelicans. It was a close game. Final couple of minutes, Thunder pulled away. So Tass, seven and eight, I'm nine and six for the month of February. Tonight's picks. I was shocked to see this, that we agree on all four games, because there's some tough ones here. Wizards, Hornets, we both like the Wiz. Clips, Cavs, we both like the Clips to snap the Cavs winning streak. We like the Mavs and the Blazers at home, so good luck to you, Tess. I was soaked the shock it as well. We uh, <laughs> have some news here. It is official. Uh, Jacques Vaughn has been fired by the Orlando Magic. Jacques Vaughn, here you go. Uh, assistant coach James Borrego will be the Magic's interim head coach. Scott Skiles reportedly uh, looming as a serious candidate to maybe eventually take over, but this is something we talked about earlier. We saw this coming. The writing was on the wall. They, they haven't improved enough, uh, obviously, for uh, the Magic's organizations or the front office's liking. And Jacques Vaughn, you can't, can't get rid of all the players. And why really would you? Because it looks like they have some talent, so it had to be Jacques. Yeah, that part is understandable. If you look at an organization like the Bucks, let's say, I think the Magic would think to themselves, especially with Jabari Parker out, we've got much as much talent I agree. as Probably. they do. And our guys are not performing near close to the level that the Bucks are. So something has to change. Magic have lost 10 straight, they're 15 and 37. You know, Vaughn was 58 and 158 in his time with the Magic. So we'll see what uh, James can do. And, and again, we'll keep our eye on uh, all the reported names. Uh, uh, it looks like a, an enticing job that you yeah. might want to yeah, take with some sure. young talent young there. So we'll be talking about that Beautiful lots more. Lee, let's get to the very solid play of the night. Going to Utah for the Memphis Grizzlies and the Utah Jazz and the pioneer of the very solid play, Marcus. Oh, this is why, because he knows where this pass is going before anyone else does. Look at this. Jeff Green just waits it beautifully to him. Jeff Green finishes with the high percentage look, which you know I love. Marcus is just such a beautiful player, and that's what I call a very solid play. Excellent stuff. We have uh, got the TNT doubleheader action, of course, tonight. We're also going to find out all the participants in the All-Star Saturday night events. So we'll get the entire three-point shootout, the skills, and so forth. So I'm sure we'll be talking about that on tomorrow's nice. show a little bit. Yes, looking forward to that. Thank you very much for joining us today. And remember, you can always take a look at things from a different vantage point. Brace the night, people.